Sir, we'll just start right out of the box, uh, Carrie. I don't know if we need a, an actual CNBC indicator here, but you point out you watch every day between 550 and 620, and it's not official, and it's not, uh, you know, we, we, <laughs> we, we haven't actually tallied it exactly, not but official. you say uh, you watch every day, nobody's been bullish for how long? At least a month, right? Every single person is bearish. Except for me. <laughs> but, uh, exactly. Exactly. It, it's unbelievable. I don't count myself. It's amazing how uniform um, the people, and I think they're all esteemed friends and, and um, smart market watchers and investors, but they've all been defensive and very conservative, and they point to the Fed raising rates, and we know that's going on, and inflation is high. We understand that. It can be sticky, and that earnings may be weak, and we also know that, and companies have said so, and many have brought down expectations. But remember, the market the market was down 20 percent, and many stocks are down over 50 percent. We are not being graded on a paper about post-pandemic economics. We are graded on asset allocation and making choices about how we find stocks attractive, where to buy them and where to sell them. Um, and so it's our opinion that there are many names that are attractive. We've been adding to names over the past month. I mean, some of what we did wasn't best uh, practice because we bought things too early. But to add to names like Align, Charter, Charter Meta, Salesforce, those have been uh, good trades because those stocks are down so much. And we also own, own some defensive stocks like O'Reilly Auto and Booz Allen, which is defense. But you have to take into consideration where the market has been. And no one is going to ring that bell. No wizard at Hogwarts is going to say buy a lot of stocks halfway through the year because this is now the time. We have to make those decisions earlier and be uncomfortable with them. For a while. Art, you definitely have an art business on the side because every single time you're on, I like the, the piece <laughs> behind you even uh, even more. I Thank wonder you. whether people bid on those. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you got caught. I don't want to know, but uh, really, it, it's. You know, I would, you, I, I would, would you like to bid? Week. Would you like to bid, Joe? <laughs> I, I like that one. I do Thank like that you. one, Jackie. Um, I go with it. <laughs> Jackie, I think you, you feel a little differently about Carrie. You're almost in the camp that the Fed is telling us what they're going to do. Why don't we just listen in, instead of uh, thinking we're smarter than the Fed? But I guess how does it resolve itself, Jackie? Because the market still doesn't believe. Still doesn't believe. The terminal rate is not five and a quarter, five and a half in the market. It's, below, it's well below that. Every time we get a decent data point, the market seems to embrace that and ignore the Fed. It's going to have to resolve itself one way. Either the Fed's wrong and they're going to have to admit it, uh, or the markets are, are wrong and it's going to be ugly. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Thank you for having me back on. Um, I think you're right. I mean, there is a disconnect between what the Fed is saying and what the market is doing. And, you know, for 25 years, we've been told don't fight the Fed. And that is very much what the market is trying to do. I think the challenge for the market is that it's really hard to prove a negative. And so what the Fed has basically said is that the jobs market is tight and they are desperately af afraid of a wage price spiral, right? And that is very hard for us to disprove, the market participants to disprove. The Fed believes that that wage price spiral is around the corner as long as the job market remains tight. And listen, the jobs report on Friday was a good report and the wage number was tame. But we continue to lower unemployment, and there continues to be more jobs than what you would want if you need labor slack. And so I think that's the real challenge, is really hard to disprove a negative. The Fed is afraid of the wage price spiral. And so unless there's slack in the labor market, it's going to be very hard for them to get comfortable to take their foot off the accelerator. Now, I would say, in response to Carrie's comments, I agree that everyone is negative here in the short term. I think that's the right stance, because I think that there is this disconnect between what the market is pricing in and what the Fed is telling you repeatedly that they're going to do. But I don't necessarily see that all of 2023 is going to be so negative. It's very rare to have two back-to-back -back years in the S&P 500. I think it's happened three times since post-World War II. So I don't know that we necessarily think it's going to be a terrible year in total. We just think the challenges here in the next six to nine months are reasonably pronounced until that gap closes between Fed expectations and market expectations.